Yeah. Um, and let's uh, go into the last topic. Seeing as we started the season with three right, right backs, Jed Spence, Matt Doherty, Emerson Royale, we've brought in one, we've let two go. Um, did, we leave us, did we leave ourselves a bit short at right wing back going into the second half of the season? Seeing as if we do get an injury, we are just left with one uh, for the remainder uh, of their injury. Um, let's start with you, Brains. Do you think we've left ourselves a bit short? Oh my God! If if Pedro Porro gets an injury, and then we have, like we all watch Emerson Royale for the rest of the season, then it's just for me it's like back to square one here. It's like uh, just kiss any any hope of positivity from me goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, obviously we're kind of like, but look, you should you're supposed to have two great players in every position. So the the problem here is that for me, I would have been happy with. Spence, even untested as a, as the backup, but we've let go of a young kid with a young prospect so he can go and get game time so he can prove to Poch when he comes in next, you know, at the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> backup. It's just crazy. It's like so. Uh, yeah, I I know that obviously Conte maybe has something for Emerson. Emerson has a lot of good good things. It's just for me like that all that what Sim was saying there and what what we what we hope to get from what david was saying about paro it's it's all kind of a little bit out the window you know we don't we won't have any of that attack and play if paro isn't playing so i feel like the worry is that it's not just that we've left ourselves short it's that it's that the pressure and expectation that we all now have on this guy this guy coming in mm-hmm. is huge and what about what what, when he, what about when he has like a bad day players have bad days what if he has a couple of mistakes? What you know, like I just feel like the the crash is going to be so heavy because we like to do that. We build them up and we batter them down. So I hope like we have a bit of patience with Poro. Like he is young. He's he's he is a hot. He's quite a hot head. Like he's he's probably going to get sent off in a big moment. Like he's going to do these things. We just we're going to have to support, and then we're going to have to deal with Emerson for a little while. So look, I think we are a little short there, but you know. I can understand that that uh, Conte probably just wants a streamlined, simple two players in every position, and and work towards maybe you know something can happen next season if he has stay. Do you feel like the expectation that we're putting on Poro or, or that the fan base have on Poro now that he's come in and pretty much our only competent attacking right wing back? the same as maybe that we put on Regulon when he came to the club. Because when Regulon came to the club, you know, he was one of the best up and coming left backs in Europe, uh, had just an amazing season with Sevilla, just won the Europa League. And then he came in and flattered the deceive a little bit. Do you think there's similarities there? Yeah, I mean, I, I always kind of liked Regulon. I just I felt like once a couple of things go wrong and once like this negativity starts, like it hits like as, as a wave, you know, and, and, and we and you can you can see it crushes players, you know, but then it's easy to argue that, you know, well, uh, yeah, like a great a player with a great mentality. And this is what we think Poro has for what he did at sporting. Like they hadn't they hadn't won anything for a very long time. And he came in, you know, like and, and they've, they've won things with him. He's coming on off like some pretty he's, he's confident. So, but then Regulon was a kind of similar similar story. So it's just a case of like hoping that the youthful exuberance doesn't get crushed by the reality of prem football, like the highest level, highest you know, um, just the highest pressure at this level of the game. So and it's it's tough for young players, but this is the risk, you know. But I I think I think stay positive. I think um, I think he'll do a lot better than Reggie because I think I think he exhibits a lot more per game, a lot more like mm. you know really important things per game. So yeah. I think he's coming a lot oh. more confident. David's gone, but um, oh. I, I would argue when it comes to uh, Reggie, first of all, I th- thought he was a decent player for us. I think in his first season yeah. under Mourinho, um, he got like six assists. Like he was doing all right from left at left back. Um, yeah, he was. Uh, he wasn't. A, he wasn't a terrible player. The big problem was when you put him a left wing back, and he's asked to do a lot more attacking than maybe he's he's comfortable with. He wasn't like like. Poro can almost be like a winger when he gets forward. Reglan was never that. He was always like a left back who goes forward. Uh, Poro, clearly, his technique, his crossing ability, he takes corners, he takes free kicks, he takes penalties. I this thought Reglan went off the ball before even the wing back system came in. Even under Jose, that last six months under Jose, I thought he was really Yeah, clear. but the whole club was... was uh... 
was in the shit. Like, uh, like uh, that. Point. The last few months that that season was terrible. Everyone was everyone was terrible. Um, the last last couple months. I actually think Reglon started really well under Conte, actually, and when and he was actually doing quite good. But when it came to actually relying on him in a like in one on one situation to take someone on or fit or um get when you get him in behind to actually have that finishing ability, he just didn't really have it. Um, and and uh, he doesn't really have a um an ability to put unbelievable crosses time after time. But if he you panic every time he went one on one yeah but he? i actually think when he when he got forward on occasion from left back when he's because he was actually quite a decent defender when he when he's asked to do that overlapping run and get some crosses in the box he was actually quite decent i actually don't, i didn't have a massive problem with regalon um i just don't think tell you he what, a, he's much better than Cessna. i'll tell you that yeah 100%. i think i think he's a much better player than Cessna. And when it comes to poro i do think the expectation is massive and, and i do think it's probably unfair the massive expectation we are putting on him but i think we are just so starved of good quality at the right back that that's the situation he's coming in but I'm hoping he's confident enough to um, take that pressure on, on on his shoulders and show his quality in terms of are we sure right back um, I would say no um, because I would say we have good variety there now because we have one defensive option there with Emerson and one attacking option there with um, with Poro and we yes Doherty was an attacking option but if need be Perisic can play on the right if need be uh, Sessinon's done stints there if need be kulisevsky has gone back to right wing back we've seen if need be Lucas Moura had a game a right wing back in pre-season so if it really does get to a stage where Emerson and Porro are both injured for extended periods of time yeah we probably are in trouble but that's just really unlucky what can you do you have two right wing backs yeah. injured you can't just have five wing backs in your squad and question our middle two. name is unlucky that's yeah, the problem yeah you know it is what it is but you can't let you can't um, legislate love for example like uh, you know Reese James got a long term injury is what it is they don't you know that um so they have another wing back but they don't have like loads of wing batches in case there's injury after injury you can't really mm. is what it, i think two should be fine you, you should splash out 30 million on malagusto you go look you go into a season with two wing if you go into the second half of the season with two wing backs if they both get injured what can you do i think i think that you were uh, i think we've done all we can do there but was there a case to say to keep to keep doherty around because he can fill in on both left and right just as a backup of the backup yeah, there was a case for it, um, but he would. But but at the moment, um, he wouldn't have been in the uh, Champions League squad. Mm. So that's something to consider. Dave, it's what do you feel disrespectful about disrespectful to keep him around and not put him in the squad? Potentially, but mm. Dave, what, what do you think about the situation? Um, look, we 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 done this last year. You know, at last January, people were saying we got three out to in numerically we're weaker. Well, I made the argument last year: if the players that we're letting out are not contributing. But then you're not weaker. You're you you and you're bringing in two players that are going to contribute. You're stronger, and that's what we've done. Look, Doherty. Yeah, we put him out there. But what did he contribute? One goal in 15 games. You know, against Preston, I counted. Uh, I got out my notepad after five times he done it inside the first 10 minutes. But how many times started he passed it inside? And I counted another 10 after that. The problem is he didn't want he didn't want to affect anything on the football pitch. And if you've got players like that, it's no good to you. What's the point of having them? So for me, I'm glad he's gone. I've always made the argument that although Emerson gets criticised and ridiculed the way he does, he's been here a lot less time than Doherty, but at least Emerson tries to do the right thing. He tries. And I'd rather have someone that tries than doesn't. Jed Spence played 41 minutes of football this season for Tottenham, so he's not a miss. Now, I understand maybe is there an argument keeping Doherty around for the right or the left. The reality is he hasn't contributed to the team this season, so there's no yeah. point. I'd much rather give the game game time if I had to to a young lad from the academy who I know is going to come up and at least he's going to put some effort in at least he's going to try and do the right things rather than persist with someone that's been here for years that has, that has just been consistently bad. The only thing you could, good you can say about someone like Doherty is he had that run of six games last year. That's it. That's not good enough for the money we pay for him, the wages we pay him and for how long he's been here. So... Good riddance to him. You know, you're bringing in a, a guy like Paro 10 times better. Emerson, he's very rarely injured, to be fair. So I think I think we're I think we're just fine at right back. And I just want to comment quickly on the uh, um, you know, you were saying that we put are we putting too much pressure on Paro? That's the feeling I want. It shows mm -hmm. it's a big signing. The, you know, and that's the feelings every we should be having coming out of every window, putting the pressure on the big signings to come in and deliver. You know, you look at the guy, he's got pure talent. You can make an educated guess that he is going to succeed rather than putting the pressure on a guy like what we've done before. As much as I love the guy, Gil Messi, but we swapped Lemena and brought in Gil. So look at the pressure coming on someone like Gil 
where mm-hmm. you, you know you're not you, you, you know that he's not going to be ready for what we've got but someone like Poro you know he's ready and you can put the pressure on him and for mm-hmm. me that's this is the feeling I want coming out of windows big signings pressure on them let's bloody go yeah all right so I think um, that is all we have time for today. Yeah.